The Washington football team is the current official name for what used to be called the Washington... something else. But the Washington football team might just be the blandest name and logo for a sports team ever. So today, we're going to fix that. We at the Harry Gold Show Creative Design Agency have all sorts of ideas for how we can improve on the old logo. But can we do it without getting in trouble? Well, you know what they say, you can't make an omelette without cancelling a few eggs. Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley. It's the Harry Gold Show. With your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. The Washington football team's old name was changed due to being deemed insensitive to the indigenous peoples of the United States. I personally refuse to say that word for the same reasons as all principled and upstanding people. Cowardice. Instead, I'm going to cut to other people saying the Washington Redskins. Hopefully the vultures from Twitter.com will eat them first. I wanted to do a video about this when the Washington Redskins first announced they were rebranding almost a year ago. But at the time, the subject matter seemed like kind of a hot potato. As in, cities burning down hot. But now things seem to have maybe simmered down a little. So in the words of Johnny Thunder, let's give it a burl. To start off with, this is what the Washington Redskins logo used to look like. We see here the profile of a solemn Native American gentleman, apparently entrapped in some kind of monocle ornamented with feathers. Not only did they make the questionable decision to recycle their own design ideas before they'd even finished the logo, but they saw fit to dip the larger pair in mustard. Subject matter aside, as a logo it works fine. Simple, graphic, and memorable. But what they replaced it with is text. Who needs interesting visuals when you've got word art that someone threw together in Microsoft PowerPoint? It's supposed to be temporary, but a lot of unfortunate things from 2020 stuck around for longer than expected. Anyhow, this is boring and forgettable. So let's forget it. We at THGS CDA can do something much better. Traditionally, when redesigning a logo, you want to carry elements over to retain brand recognition while simultaneously revitalizing the brand and uh, distancing yourself from negative publicity. So maybe a successfully unproblematic rebrand is as simple as recontextualization. Maybe the name refers not to any ethnic group, but instead to Redskin Potatoes. Nothing prejudiced about potatoes, whether you boil them, mash them, or stick them in a stew. Well boys, we did it. Racism is no more. Alright, I get it. Maybe this is still a little close to the bone. The market research people are telling us that even though the client insisted there was nothing wrong with the team name for decades, now that their sponsors, who also didn't care until about five seconds ago, have leaned on them, they're just as upset as anyone else by the term The Redskins. Alright, we can work with that. But we still want that sense of continuity and recognition in the team name. Now the poll testers tell us that zombies perform very well with the 18 to 24 demo. So how about the Washington Rotskins? That's not a slur, just coincidentally similar. Now we have a completely non-denominational, racially non-specific green zombie. Should keep everyone happy, right? If that's not good enough, we can still get more inclusive. How about the Washington No-Skins? Genderless, featureless, and without a trace of individuality. It's perfect. Maybe cadavers don't quite suit the company's image, though. Marvel movies are hot property with the 25 to 34 year olds. Why not change to the Washington Red Skulls? We can use Hydra tentacles in place of the feathers. As a side note, does anyone else find it strange that the Hydra logo incorporates an octopus, but not, you know, the Hydra? Anyhow, this still might not be the direction we want to go in. Someone's probably going to object to the whole associating the brand with a magical super Nazi thing. No big deal. Marketing tells us the youth demo is way into memes, and everyone knows corporations aren't legally allowed to incorporate memes into their marketing unless they're already long dead and sort of miss the point. Please, don't turn me into an oversimplified logo. <laughs> The offensiveness has been oversimplified out of existence. Do you think these gags about the Redskins logo will upset someone? I mean, people will be able to tell it's all meant to be in good fun, right? Oh well, we're in it too deep now. now, 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 now. <laughs> All aboard the train to cancellation station. 
on a one-way ticket to Annihilation with me, here they come Spurious allegations, are they true? No one really cares They just crave that sweet sensation That comes from decimation of a reputation if you want to hear the other side of the story, you're just as bad. Blocked. It's cancellation station for me. Folks online who already were not your fans. Float like that's an achievement. Cause they have the IQ of a bed pan. Years of goodwill up in smoke. Just over a joke. Going broke. Stay woke. That aged poorly unsubscribed. Total ruination for me. Oh, log board the train to cancellation station. An eternity. Of damnation with me All right, maybe it's best if we just eject any connection to the word redskins altogether. We want to do something relevant to the youth of today while still maintaining a thread of continuity through the profile motif. As a sports team logo, we also want to project an image of power and physical acuity. How about the Washington Chads? Yes. Conversely, when a brand is in a state of tumult, it can be beneficial to retreat into comfortable recognizability. Safe territory that plays with the 45 to 54 bracket. In this case, we'd suggest to you the Washington Washingtons. Okay, alright, maybe this isn't satisfactory. Maybe we want to drop the old logo completely and get a fresh start. So then all we have to ask ourselves is, what kind of imagery is evocative of Washington DC? Well, we at THGS CDA still have plenty of options for you. We want to evoke raw power and primal instinct, while at the same time representing Washington and the political class for which it is famous. How about the Washington Dinosaurs? Intimidating and dynamic, just like the Senate and its average age of over 60. We all know how much politicians love to pander, so why not the Washington Pandas? It echoes DC's unfailing duty to the nation that's paying their wages, unless another nation makes a better offer. This is a sports team, so you want to suggest traits like agility and cunning. Nothing quite meets these requirements like the Washington Snakes, or even the Washington Weasels. A perfect symbol of DC, if ever there was one. Maybe we need something to indicate humility and stick to A team that takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Something like the Washington Lame Ducks. Our poll testing tells us that people associate politicians with poll testing. They like to follow the tried and true, maintain equilibrium. Thus, we bring you the Washington Sheep. Perhaps what we really need is to connect with the proletariat. Use imagery that reflects an unpretentious way of life. And nothing says informal and unfussy quite like flip-flops. We could focus on DC's strong sense of family values with the Washington dynasties, or perhaps focus on the importance of commerce to a healthy nation with the Washington Fat Cats. Maybe we ought to hearken to the spirited nature of modern political discourse with the Washington Partisans, or signify an admiration for conviction and original thinking with the Washington Radicals. Let me level with you. The obvious joke, begging to be made here from the beginning, maybe it's even occurred to you already, is that if the team is ditching their name because it offends people, it'd be funny to suggest they're so inept and so out of touch that they'd replace it with something just as offensive, if not even more so. You know, forget the Redskins. That's racist. Meet the new team, the Washington. Insert epithet here. Problem is, we kinda live in a post-nuance society. The joke here is obviously at the expense of the team and whoever is designing the logo. You know, me. The gag being that they and I are so dumb we can't figure out that the new logo is also offensive. But the fact that a naughty word has been depicted at all is enough to get heads rolling. To a lot of folks, the context will be irrelevant. The fact that it's a joke and not an attack on any subsection of humanity will fall on deaf ears. So what do we do? Well, here's my ace in the hole. I'm Jewish. Shalom. Here's my menorah. Here's my Hanukkah. Here's my spare mezuzah. 
and here's my leftover matzah from Paso. Everyone knows that only people to whom a slur refers can use that slur and get away with it. Have you figured out where I'm going with this? Maybe no one will care. Is there such a thing as too small to cancel? Hopefully. Perhaps it'll have a delayed effect. Someone will dredge it up years from now. I look forward to seeing all the original thinkers posting the exact same this aged like milk in the comments. If my account doesn't get deleted for hate crimes, I'll see you on the other side. Have I made a big enough song and dance about this? Forget the Washington Redskins. That's offensive. Say hello to... Washington Kikes, but I kind of like how this one sounds like a heavy metal band. Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, and the first three people to guess who it is in the comments get a shout out when I tell you the answer in the next episode. It's not inconceivable that you guessed Wallace Shawn last time, in which case you are absolutely correct. Vizzini doesn't know Jack, but Jack sure knows Vizzini. Taking first place, Rich Clark used his wealth of knowledge to land second. And Astro Specs has my respect for claiming third. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. This week's subject has eyes I would conservatively estimate to be about the size of grapefruits. By way of contrast, their button nose could be dwarfed by even the most malnourished kumquat. They also have an inordinately broad chipmunky smile, showing off an unreasonable number of teeth. Aren't you glad I didn't make another citrus comparison? <laughs> I'm sorry, even I know that hokey old gag was a lemon. Anyway, they have a long neck and a short chin, like a giraffe that tripped headfirst into a wood chipper. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're in the mood for throwing some likes and subs around, well, we're right here. But this has been the Harry Gold Show, so until next time, stay safe, and God bless.